Welcome back to MediClass. Whenever there is injury to any part of the body, the changes in are redness, swelling, heat, pain, and sometimes loss of function. Also, when there is any pathogenic infection like gingivitis, the gums appear red, swollen, they bleed, or often there is pain or discomfort. Now, whenever there is injury to any part of the body or entry of pathogen, the body reacts by a process called as acute inflammatory response. The acute inflammatory response is part of the innate immune system. It consists of the vascular changes and cellular changes. The vascular changes involves increase in vasodilatation and increased vascular permeability. This is the blood vessel where you see the diameter of the vessel is normal, but in inflammation there is increase in the diameter of the blood vessel causing vasodilatation. Also there is increased vascular permeability which causes the plasma proteins and the fluids to come out of the lumen into the interstitial tissues. Then there are cellular events. Cellular events involve leukocyte recruitment and activation and finally phagocytosis. Leukocyte recruitment process is the most important process in acute inflammatory response. Coming to transendothelial migration, it is a step in the inflammatory response in which leukocytes actually cross the endothelial cell, lining the blood vessel at the site of inflammation and reach the target tissue. Transendothelial literally means crossing the endothelium as you can see in this image. So there is a selective interaction between the leukocytes and the endothelium that causes the leukocyte to push its way between the endothelial cells and exit the blood and enter the tissues. The key feature of acute inflammation is PMNs or the neutrophils and the monocytes are the chief cells but there are also other cells like mast cells, dendritic cells and histiocytes. Neutrophils do not need to differentiate substantially to function and they are suited for rapid responses. That's why neutrophils are called as the first line of defense. Monocytes however reach the site 24 to 48 hours after neutrophils because they come out of the blood vessel and mature to become macrophages. So getting leukocyte to the site of injury or infection is prime importance in inflammation. Now there are certain events leading to the leukocyte recruitment from blood into the target tissues. Whenever there is any kind of localized infection, the resident cell like the dendritic cells, macrophages, mast cells and endothelial cells are activated and they produce and release certain mediators like the interleukin-1, interleukin-8 and tumor necrosis factor alpha which causes upregulation of certain adhesion molecules onto the endothelium. So transendothelial migration is a sequential process which involves first rolling of the leukocytes followed by insult to the local tissues then there is increased rolling after which there are signals sent to the endothelium to cause rolling arrest. Rolling arrest is followed by strong adhesion and finally the zipper phase. So this is a diagrammatic representation of how transendothelial migration occurs. This is a normal flow of the RBCs and the WBCs. This is the margination and pavementing. This is followed by rolling and adhesion of the leukocytes and finally extravasation of these leukocytes into the tissues. Now what is margination? The RBCs have a very high velocity as you can see in this image and they tend to push away the neutrophils or the WBCs towards the vessel wall. This mechanical forcing of neutrophil out of the axial stream and pushing them into the periphery is called margination. So the RBCs have a very high velocity and due to the high volume and low speed of the WBCs they are pushed close to the endothelium and that's the reason why the leukocyte come in contact with the endothelium frequently. Coming to rolling, leukocytes transiently attach to the endothelium and then detach. This regular attachment and detachment causes rolling of the neutrophils or leukocytes onto the vessel wall. It's a process by which the leukocyte essentially pauses and inspects the endothelium. Now there are certain molecules which are present on the surface of the neutrophils. These are L-selectins, silyl Lewis X modified glycoprotein and leukocyte function associated antigens. In the case of rolling, there are certain selectins released by the endothelium as well. So the P-selectin molecule present on the endothelium attaches to the silyl Lewis X molecule present on the neutrophils which causes a mild adhesion. The L-selectin attaches to the CD34 molecule present on the endothelial cells. So you can see in this image, after rolling, the PMNs or the neutrophils come in contact with the P-selectins present on the endothelium and that's how they slow in speed or roll over the endothelium. When there is insult to the local tissue, there is release of inflammatory signals, mainly from the mast cells. So the complement factor C3A and C5A cause activation of these mast cells the mast cells in turn release some mediators like the interleukin 1 beta and the tumor necrosis factor alpha which are crucial in neutrophil recruitment. With release of these cytokines there is signaling to the endothelium. 
After release of the interleukin 1 beta, TNF alpha, that's the tumor necrosis factor alpha, the bacterial lipopolysaccharide, and the complement 5A, it causes increased expression of the ENP selectins, which are present on the endothelial cells. With increased expression of these selectins, there is increase in the time the leukocyte comes in contact with the endothelium, and this causes increased rolling. After the endothelium is stimulated, it releases certain chemokines like the leukotriene B4 and the interleukin-8. This interleukin-8 comes in contact with the CXCR2 protein which is present on the surface of the neutrophil and causes it to shed its L-selectin and causes upregulation of the leukocyte function associated antigen 1. Simultaneously, the interleukin-8 also causes upregulation of certain adhesion molecules on the endothelial cells which are called the intercellular adhesion molecules 1 and 2. This is followed by strong adhesion. Now the leukocyte function associated antigen comes in contact with the intercellular adhesion molecule 1 present on the endothelial cells. This results in rolling arrest as you can see in this image coming to the transmigration or diapedesis. There are CD31 molecules also called as platelet endothelial cell adhesion molecules or the PCAMs which are present both on the endothelium as well as the leukocytes. So the CD31 molecules present on the leukocyte come in contact with the CD31 molecule present on the endothelium. This guides the PMNs to the borders between the endothelial cells. The binding of both the CD1 molecules on the neutrophils as well as the endothelium causes a zipper effect, which is similar to a zip. This is followed by unzipping of the CD31 molecules which are present on the endothelium and the PMN gets an opportunity to exit the vessels. So there is margination, rolling, adhesion, diapedesis, and finally, there is chemotaxis and phagocytosis. To summarize, PMNs are the chief cells involved in acute inflammation. PMNs are recruited from the lumen of the vessel into the connective tissue. During margination, there is attachment of the silyl Lewis X proteins present on the PMNs and the E-selectin present on the endothelial cells. This causes rolling. This is followed by tight binding or adhesion between the ICAM, that is the intercellular adhesion molecule on the endothelium to the leukocyte function associated molecule on the PMNs. This is followed by diapedesis through the action of CD31 molecules, which is followed by migration, chemotaxis, and phagocytosis. You can find a link to the Google form in the description of the video. You can try MCQs related to this topic and find out how much you understood about it. We hope you like the video and if you do, please subscribe to the channel. So see you in the next video. Till then, stay healthy and have an amazing week.